Today what I'm going to show you how to do is to cook the perfect steak. So what I've got is a wonderful piece of sirloin here. This is a USDA from Tom Hickson to Smithfield. This is choice cut, but it's absolutely fantastic as you can see. I'm going to trim it up, but not too much. Cut some lovely steaks out of it. And then I'm going to show you how to cook the perfect steak. What I'm going to do is just remove this chain. Just pull it off. Don't throw it away. It's very much priced, delicious. So I'm quickly going to remove that. Then there's a bit of sinew that has to come out here. That sinew will shrink when you cook it, so you do have to remove that. Just remove that sinew there. Then I'm going to take a little bit off the tip. I'm going to cut some steaks. So I want them quite a nice size. Cut a nice big steak. You can always cut them and share them. On this. As you can see, it's a beautiful steak. It's a sirloin. So that's, this is a British cut, which is called the sirloin, which we leave a little bit on the top. And if you was to take it right up and clean the front off, it would be a New York strip, which means they've got no fat. You'd leave just a little, almost like a little Brazilian running along the top. So now, as you can see, I've cut some lovely steaks. Now we're going to get our grill, and I'm going to show you how to cook the perfect steak. So first of all, I'm going to season our steaks. Be very generous when you're seasoning your steaks. The simple reason, 40% of your seasoning falls off when it hits the pan. So I'll, I'll show you when I season a steak, I season them twice. Once for start, I always use rock salt because it's got no chemicals in it and its flavour's a lot cleaner. A little bit thinner than that, just a nice seasoning rock salt. Some people don't season their steak before they cook them. I always do. So what I'm going to do is I'm putting a very little bit of oil, but not too much at all. Because what we're going to do is we're going to render the fat from the edge of your sirloin. So we just add them like that, as you can see. I'm going to render that down. So what we'll be doing, we'll be cooking it in its own fat. Pans nice and hot, we're going to add our steak like that. It's really important that you get a really nice colour. As you can see, it's really well sealed. You can do that on both sides. Turn the heat down, so I'm actually cooking it in the pan. Giving it a nice sealing, and I'm gonna show you how to cook it with your hands. So obviously, the more tense the muscle, the more cooked you like it. So if you like it well done, it's gonna be very firm. So medium rare, you're gonna be about there. You can also use something which I think is really good, is a probe. So if you take your steak, for me, I like it medium rare. If you take it to 45 with your probe, it's going to be perfect. But the main thing is that we're going to seal it off really well, then we're going to give it a really good rest, then we're going to seal it back and finish it with a little bit of butter. Now what we're going to do, we're going to add a little bit of butter. I've got a bit of thyme here, a bit of garlic that I've crushed. This is just going to give it an extra bit of flavour. Baste that steak, give it some extra flavour there. The art of cooking a great steak is not just the cooking, it's the resting. So what I like to do is I cook it off really well. Obviously this is a big steak, this is going to be for two. We're gonna, then I'm going to rest it and then I'm going to finish it back in the pan. And it's really important that you get that lovely caramelisation on the beef rather than boil it. Turning, moving it. It's also better if you let your steak, take it out of the fridge and let it rest for 30 minutes. Let it come to room temperature before you cook it. It will just speed up the cooking process. Now, you just let it rest. What I do, as I'm resting, just put a little extra seasoning. So as the muscle opens up, the salt goes in. 